In the previous episode of Catastrophe and Cartography, we used the National Map Viewer here to look at the erosion that's taken place across North America. And one of the things we learned is that a lot of this erosion took place within the last 15,000 years due to all the ice sheets melting up in Canada. In this video, we're going to use another tool to explore the Carolina Bays. This is a very interesting set of craters, basically, that's completely covering the southeastern United States. And if you'd like to follow along with us today, you'll need to download this KMZ file for Google Earth. I'll have a link for this web page in the video description. Essentially, the way it works is you just download the file and then open it inside of Google Earth, and then we'll go through it together. And this is what we're going to be looking at in just a few minutes. We can see that throughout the southeastern United States, there's all these very interesting elliptical craters that still don't have a great explanation, especially from the mainstream consensus. But as we begin to look at all the craters and do our own research and just think logically about it, this ties in with the previous episode where we talked about a potential comet impact into the North American ice sheets during the Younger Dryas time frame. Let's head over to Google Earth now and begin our tour of the Carolina Bays. If you want to follow along with us today, you will need to download the standalone version of Google Earth and then install the filters through here. Unfortunately, I don't think they'll work on the new and improved version of Google Earth on the internet. From this altitude, we can see that the Carolina Bays are largely focused in the southeast, as you'd expect, in North and South Carolina. But they do stretch all the way up into New Jersey and even New York, and then down into Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama. And there's even some of these features over in Nebraska, which are called the Nebraska Rainwater Basins. And all you have to do is zoom in, and it might be a little bit laggy, but once you zoom in, you're going to start to see a lot of little red dots. These are all of the Carolina Bays. And that right there should tell you something weird is going on, because how can you have this many bays throughout the southeastern United States? And this is a thing that the average person has no idea about. And that's why in this series, I'm really focusing in on these special maps that allow the average person to view these catastrophic features that were left behind during the end of the last ice age. For those of you that actually live in the southeast, this might be the perfect resource to give you an idea of what happened to your own neighborhood during the end of the ice age. You might realize you're living in a scene of complete devastation at one time. And because there are so many Carolina Bays, really you just pick an area and zoom in and then see what you can find because they're just littering the entire landscape. One of the things you'll start to notice though is that they all are elliptical and they all have pretty much the same orientation. And that orientation actually rotates slightly as you move north or south. This is a huge clue as to how the Carolina Bays were formed. And that's something that Antonio Zamora has been spending a lot of time on. He's kind of the, I would say, one of the foremost guys talking about the Carolina Bays over on YouTube. If we take a quick detour to his YouTube page, we can see that every single day now, he's uploading new videos on the Carolina Bays. And he goes into the different theories on how they're formed, including the mainstream opinion. And it's a really interesting way to spend your time checking out some of these videos. Of course, there are alternate theories to how the Carolina Bays form because Antonio Zamora pretty much says that they're caused by ice impacts. And we'll get into this more later, but essentially you had the impact into the ice sheets, the ice polders went up into the atmosphere, and then came crashing down, creating all the Carolina Bays. Others have suggested it was actually an asteroid or comet itself exploding, and those fragments caused the bays. Others would say it was almost like snowballs from an impact. Either way, it would seem that regardless of what the actual event was, it has something to do with an impact here on Earth, not just a simple wind and rainwater, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So if you want to learn more about the Carolina Bays, check out Antonio Zamora's page here on YouTube. He's got a lot of really interesting videos that are worth checking out. Getting back to Google Earth, here we can see that there's a large discrepancy in the sizing of the Carolina Bays. Some are incredibly large, while others right next to them are much smaller. Regardless of the size though, they all share the same elliptical shape and the same orientation up towards the ice sheets in Canada. As we're going through the map here, I want to give you some ideas of how these Carolina Bays might have formed. The first thing to understand is that the Carolina Bays are only found on the sandy soil in the southeastern United States. In other words, the Carolina Bays were only formed on soft ground. 
there aren't any Carolina bays on the harder ground, even if it's right next to it. Another thing to consider is that these Carolina bays, a lot of them are in pretty good shape, all things considered. And some of the theories would indicate that the Carolina bays are 50,000 years, 100,000 years, maybe even older. But if that were true, you would think that, especially with all the erosion we've had from glacial to interglacial in the last 100,000 years, that all that erosion would have significantly reduced the visibility of these Carolina bays. Therefore, I would argue that if the Carolina bays were formed a long time ago, they should have been largely eroded by now. But we can see here with the LiDAR imaging that they're definitely still pretty intact, which to me indicates that they were formed most likely within the last 15,000 years. And what Antonio says in a lot of his videos is that the most likely explanation, regardless of how they actually formed, is that the event happened about 12,900 years ago at the start of the Younger Dryas. If you recall from our previous video in this series, we noted that the Younger Dryas started about 12,900, 12,800 years ago, and the temperature on the planet dropped considerably for a period of about 1,200 years. Then, seemingly overnight, the global temperature rised pretty considerably and stayed that warm for roughly the last 10,000 years. And that would tie in with the Carolina Bays, because if these are caused by ice or snow or whatever ejecting from the ice sheet, then that would make sense that they happened at 12,900 years ago. Another thing to be aware of is that we don't currently have any proxy evidence of a extraterrestrial impact at 11,600 years ago, when the planet rapidly warmed. To me, that would indicate the sun or maybe some other cosmic event caused the rapid warmth of the planet at about 11,600 years ago. And that's why I think astrophotography is so important because the more people that are looking up into space and photographing the stars and the sun and the moon and everything else, the more data we can have and the larger our global awareness will be that we truly do live in a cosmic environment. And one of the things I've noticed doing a lot of research over the past few years is that in many scientific disciplines, they tend to exclude the cosmic factor and only focus on terrestrial events. So we've seen the Carolina Bays in the southeast, and I could spend all day here just looking at this map. I love this new technology we have, including LIDAR, which enables us to see through and really focus in on what's going on. But this is why I love modern technology in a lot of ways, because without LIDAR, it would be very hard for us to measure and learn about the Carolina Bays because they don't stand out very well on just the normal Google Maps. Let's zoom out now and check out the Nebraska rainwater basins and see how those differ from the Carolina Bays. As we're zooming out here, I want to reiterate a point I made earlier. The Carolina Bays that we're viewing today are only visible on this soft, unconsolidated ground in the southeast. And the point I'm trying to make is that there might have been impacts all over this entire area but because they landed on hard areas and not soft areas, there was no crater left behind. And this ties in with the megafauna extinction that we saw in North America right around 12,900 years ago. Whatever event happened there kicked off a mass extinction of animals, mainly in North and South America. And so now that you're starting to piece all this together in your head, hopefully, you can imagine if there was anything living in the southeastern United States, whatever was falling from the sky and causing these impacts would have completely obliterated all the living species, especially megafauna. And this is why I always have to laugh when I read an article that claims that humans killed off the mega sloths or the cave bears, whatever it was, because when you really start to understand the geology of North America with the help of these maps, you can see that there was a horrible series of events going on, and it makes no sense that humans are growing around killing millions of massive predators. But anyway, getting back on track, we have the Nebraska rainwater basins way out here. And as we zoom in, you'll start to notice some changes compared to the Carolina Bays. The Nebraska rainwater basins are all oriented in the other direction. This time they're going roughly east to west, and I do mean roughly, whereas in the southeast, they were going kind of north and south. And this gives further credence to the impact theory that all of these basins were caused by an impact into the ice sheet, and then that material, whether it was snow, ice, slush, whatever, raining down over the planet, rather than just simple wind and erosion over thousands of years. And that's going to about do it for today's video. My main goal was just to make you aware that this resource exists. You can very easily load it up into Google Earth, and then explore as much as you want. 
I'm going to have links for all the topics we discussed today in the video description below, so be sure to go through there and read more if you're interested. And don't forget about Antonio Zamora's YouTube page. That's one of the best resources I've found for the Carolina Bays. And even if you don't agree with his hypothesis that these were caused by ice boulders, it's still interesting to watch some of his videos, come in here on Google Earth on your own, and then speculate what might have happened most likely around 12,900 years ago. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.